One thing no one tells you about a global pandemic before you enter into one is that it gets kind of repetitive. Among the cycle of death and misery, there is of course always room for emotions like sympathy and worry, but the secret one that you're not really supposed to feel is monotony. However, that's certainly one legitimate response to news that a new COVID-19 variant may be more dangerous and more transmissible than any that have come before it. Here's what you need to know. Concerns over the transmissibility and danger posed by the Lambda COVID-19 variant are growing as it has now been detected in 31 countries, according to tracking site Just Said. The variant was first detected in Peru and now accounts for 82% of new infections in the country, according to German broadcaster Deutsche Welle. It is also being detected in 33% of cases in Chile. Other countries in South America, including Argentina and Brazil, are experiencing rapid spreads of their own. The variant is defined by several mutations to its spike protein. The L452Q mutation, in particular, is believed to have enhanced its ability to attach to human cells, according to a preprint of a study printed on the BioArchive online archive. The same study showed some increase in resistance to antibodies created by Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna's vaccines. This was again caused by the L552Q mutation, as well as the 4590S mutation. However, the study concluded that this increased resistance was minor. Much of the concern around the variant then seemingly comes from its effects in the outside world, rather than scientific analysis of its abilities. Peru, where it is dominant, has the highest number of COVID deaths per head of population in the world and the highest number of deaths per confirmed case of COVID-19. However, other factors could also be involved in these figures. For instance, the BBC reported last month that Peru's health service had several severe weaknesses in its COVID response, and high case numbers could even be attributed to an absence of refrigerators in people's homes, forcing households to make frequent trips to markets. One WHO virologist remained equivocal when discussing the Lambda variant with Deutsche Welle. So far, we have seen no indication that the Lambda variant is more aggressive, he said. It is possible that it may exhibit higher infection rates, but we don't yet have enough reliable data to compare it to Gamma or Delta. For the moment, we can only be clear that this variant is spreading quickly through South America and the world. One researcher at a university in Peru's capital city said, We had 200 Lambda infections in December. By the end of March, it made up half of all samples taken to Lima. Now, three months later, we are looking at more than 80% of all infections nationwide. Lambda has become the dominant variant in Peru in a very short period of time. On a similarly pessimistic note, the same researcher suggested that South America is likely to become a breeding ground for new COVID variants, owing to the combination of overwhelmed healthcare systems, populations working precarious jobs where it's difficult to follow safety precautions, and lack of vaccines. Chile has vaccinated 60% of its citizens, but that is an exception on the continent, the researcher cited by Deutsche Welle said. It is very likely that new variants will appear during a third wave of coronavirus infections during the South American winter between July and September. They may not be any more lethal, but they will definitely be more communicable. In other words, we could be set for a lot more variants like this one. We can probably all agree that no coronavirus variant is good. However, it does seem that some variants are particularly good at being bad. And one in particular is now being described by WHO officials as the most able and fastest and fittest of all the variants. Here's what you need to know. The Delta variant is becoming the dominant strain of coronavirus worldwide, according to the WHO, and its combination of high transmissibility, high severity, and escape from vaccines makes it very dangerous, experts told National Geographic. The variant has a number of mutations in its spike proteins that can make it harder for antibodies to attach to the virus, or easier for it to latch onto and invade human cells. According to science journal Nature, one mutation in particular is at the furin cleavage site, which is important for the virus's ability to replicate inside human airways. If the virus is better at replicating inside human airways, it can mean an individual is likely to shed more virus particles when infected, a virologist at Imperial College London told the Daily Telegraph. UK Health Secretary Matt Hancock told the BBC this month that the variant was around 40% more transmissible than the Alpha variant. 
The Alpha variant itself is thought to be between 40 and 70 percent more transmissible than the original virus strain found in Wuhan, according to studies cited by the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. A Public Health England study on vaccine efficacy against the Delta variant found the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine 96 percent effective against hospitalization after two doses, with AstraZeneca 92 percent effective. Overall, it found Pfizer-BioNTech 6 percent less effective than it is against the Alpha variant and AstraZeneca 1 percent less effective. More information is needed to confirm reports the Delta variant causes more severe disease, according to the WHO's COVID technical lead, Maria Van Kerkhoff. However, Tim Spector, a researcher with a COVID symptom study, told New Atlas its symptoms were more often headaches and runny noses than coughing or loss of smell, which could result in people not realizing they have COVID. It is also possible to find convincing evidence that this variant causes more severe disease than any other variants. A study published in the Lancet Medical Journal found that people in Scotland infected with the Delta variant were twice as likely to be hospitalized as those infected with the Alpha. But the takeaway from all of these reports should surely be this. It's official. Coronavirus is now like a slightly deranged kid in a slightly deranged candy store. It's collecting all of the worst things for your body and packaging them up to see what they do to you. Of course, the kid in the candy store is just collecting candy, while this virus is collecting mutations that make it more efficient at reproducing inside your body. But you get the idea. Here's what you need to know. A new coronavirus hybrid that combines the Indian variant with mutations originally belonging to the UK variant has been detected in Vietnam, according to the country's health minister cited by the AFP. The Indian variant is able to spread more easily than earlier forms of the virus partly because of a mutation it carries on its spike protein called L452R, according to Grace Roberts, research fellow in virology at Queen's University Belfast, writing in The Conversation. The L452R mutation allows the virus to bind to ACE2 receptors on human cells more stably. Once the two are bound together, the cell's membrane engulfs the virus and internalizes it. The Indian variant also carries a second mutation on the spike protein called E484Q. According to Roberts at Queen's University, research suggests mutations that affect this area of the spike protein may make the virus less susceptible to pre-existing antibodies. The new variant found in Vietnam combines both of these previous mutations with a Y144 deletion on its protein spike that is consistent with the UK variant, according to Vietnam's National Institute of Hygiene and Epidemiology, cited by VN Express. This missing amino acid can also make it more difficult for antibodies to stick to the virus, according to the New York Times. After keeping the virus at low levels for most of last year, Vietnam's infection since late April accounted for more than half of its total 6,856 registered cases, according to a May 30th AFP report. The WHO has not yet made any assessment of the apparent new virus variant. However, it has introduced a new naming system for notable variants based on the Greek alphabet. A statement on its website said naming variants after particular countries was stigmatizing and discriminatory. Under the new system, the UK variant is labeled as Alpha, the South African variant Beta, and the Indian variant as Delta. The change comes in response to widespread displeasure among the scientific community over the use of national labels for new variants. In a letter to the journal Science, one group of researchers said the labels de-incentivized country-level genomic surveillance and transparent reporting of results. They also added that the practice was inaccurate because it is not known whether patient zero of each variant was a resident of or visitor to that country, and all variants have been identified well beyond the first countries in which they were identified. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.